Hey guys, so how are you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. I hope you're having an awesome day. So you're probably wondering where am I? Well, I'm back in Kent in the southeast part of the United Kingdom. You can't get me away from this place, can you? Um, I'm actually here. This is a, a Friday morning and uh, I've come down for a spoon carving workshop with the delightful Jill, Jill Swan. Uh, Jill Swan, she made a cameo in a video I made, uh, what was it, two, three months ago? Uh, Woodcrafters in, uh, in Kent. Uh, that was a previous video I did. And I finally got around to kind of confirming dates with her. Uh, so I'm now here. Um, I'm here, um, I'm actually here till tomorrow, but what my idea is this is, obviously I've done a spoon carving, I've done, I've done like a basic guide. Uh, when I went on the bushcraft course about, what, three, was it three months ago now? Uh, we spent like about three, four hours just working on spoon carving. Uh, but really I've not had like a proper, proper walkthrough, which is something I'm really looking forward to do. And finally the time has come, you know, to sit down with Jill Swan and do that. Now I'm going to be introducing Jill uh, shortly. Uh, so just to give you a quick backdrop, um, I've driven down to Kent, it took me about an hour and a half in Canterbury. Um, and this is a beautiful part of the United Kingdom, absolutely stunning. Uh, really rustic and rural and everything you kind of imagine. Now Jill actually owns her own woodland there, I believe it's 20, 20 something acres um, and it's absolutely beautiful uh, here, it's like a little oasis um, and what it is, I'm doing a one to one today with her uh, spoon carving um, now what I want to do, I've got, a, I've got an idea for a couple of different videos uh, now this one that you're watching right now is just basically a video diary uh, so believe it or not, I think it's actually going to be quite a short video this one he says while recording this, we'll see how it transpires uh, and it's going to be just a very general video diary but have no fear because what we're going to be doing later on today is I'm going to record a separate video with Jill uh, which is going to be a beginner's guide to spoon carving uh, and in that one, uh, the reason why I mention that is don't watch this video thinking oh Zed you missed this bit out and we want to find out more about this I'm going to put out a separate video after this one that you're watching in now uh, that's going to be a beginner's guide so it's going to cover everything that you really need to know to kind of get going with, uh, with a spoon carving uh, but also just to give you a general idea of what it's all about um, so like I said, I'm going to put out you know, a couple of different videos. This is just a general video diary. Um, so what's my kind of inspiration for getting onto a spoon carving course? Well, having been on that bushcraft course, um, there's a couple of different reasons uh, that are incentivizing me to get into spoon carving. Firstly, I didn't appreciate this until I've done a, uh, the bushcraft course, and that is by learning spoon carving, what you're actually doing, you're learning essential green woodworking skills. Uh, you're learning how to you know, handle knives and uh, uh, the crook knives and so forth and axes uh, also you're learning to identify woods uh, the, the grain of woods how woods work now imagine if you can carve out a really fancy spoon which is what I'm hoping to do right uh, if you can carve out a really fancy spoon imagine when you're out in the wild and you want to carve a tempeg or a pot hanger or the likes thereof you know, you start to build up a much better skill set you know in terms of you know carving stuff out so that's my my main motivation but also as well i'm really getting to the craft side of the outdoors and bushcraft uh, so green woodworking leather craft blacksmithing and so forth um, and also more important it's an excuse to get out of it look at that man so it's predicted for a bit of rain uh, so we'll just have to see how that pans out obviously if it's heavy rain it's going to affect the way i can film because this is not waterproof so um, Let's keep our fingers crossed it's kind of dry enough to get the video recorded. So without further ado, uh, join me as I attend my first ever spoon carving workshop. Okay guys, so I, will, I am with Jill Swan. Jill, my dear, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you, Zed. Excellent stuff, man. So, um, well, I'm just, just spend a, a quick minute just introducing you to Jill before we kind of continue with the rest of the video. Uh, so Jill, we're in delightful Canterbury, man. How beautiful is this woods that you've got over here? Yeah, they're lovely. It's, I'm very lucky to have them. With the thing. Um, could you tell the guys, just spend a minute just telling them your background uh, and also kind of how you got into spoon carving and how you ended up kind of, you know, with what you've got here right now. Yeah, I bought the wood uh, six years ago now, I think, and um, didn't really know what I was going to do with it. And I spent a lot of time walking around thinking how beautiful the actual wood was that was falling off the trees and the trees blowing over and I wanted desperately to do something with that wood rather than just use it for firewood because there were so many twisted branches and um, I started uh, teaching myself spoon carving. I saw, I looked on YouTube and saw somebody making a spoon and uh, decided I'd give it a go and that was five years ago. I've been to see various teachers um, over the years and now I'm teaching myself and I run classes from the woods here. 
It's a sub. So how many acres is this again? This wood. Uh, it's 27. 27. God, yeah. this is absolutely stunning. And you acquired this when? What was it? To... Uh, 07, I think. 07? Yeah. It was about yeah. five years ago. Yeah, of, years ago. Of, yeah maybe 06, yeah. Wow, so, yeah. so you're, you're, do you teach full time then? Uh, yeah, I have classes. Uh, I have classes probably once a month. I have five or six people down once mm. a month. Then in the meantime, we have uh, Thursdays. We have people down who just come and carve. We carve together socially, and um, yeah, it's it's. And I sell spoons in the shop in Canterbury. I make them. I'm, I'm here carving every day, pretty much in the summer. It's like a little oasis here, man. So what we're going to do, guys? Like I said, we're gonna. Um this one is just a general kind of video diary, so we're just going to do some random shots, try and look all artsy fancy, right? With my video editing, uh, and then what we're going to do a bit later on at the end of the day, we're going to shoot like a separate video uh, where Jill is kindly going to do like a, a talk through, kind of from start to finish, the whole process uh, of spoon carving. So let's begin. Oh, that's right. He said, uh, "Yeah, haven't forgotten you. I'm going up to Nick's." Weeks oh really? Them, and, okay. And, and yours is on the list, and okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Good tap, right, just around the right place. Oops. Alright. That's it, now it's in. Now the whole lift the whole thing up, bang together. Quite hard. That's it. Oh nice. You got the oh it's at the wrong end of the bowl. Alright, that's fine. Alright, keep going. See you've got a knot there. That's it. There you go, look, look at that. There you go, there's my spoon. So Who'd have thought it? So we're done, aren't we then? That's it. That's yeah. It. That's our finished spoon. Yeah, that'd be £45.50. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the progress so far is we have taken the wood and uh, we've trimmed it down with an axe. And here you see we've drawn the, the shape of the spoon off. And basically what we've done, we just used the axe and just trimmed it down. Now what we're going to do is put some stop cuts here and trim it down even more. Well, here we go. This has just come out the wood here. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> that was a close one. That's all right, it's gone. Look at her. scarier than anything. Yeah, I'm more than... I'm usually the nervous one. Okay, did you see what I did there? I did. That's probably cool, I like that. So we just... You take the end off like that with your finger down the blade. Like that, tip, tap, tap. You take the ends off if you're going to round your end over. Actually, you're going to leave your square. Mm -hmm. for now because you've got a slightly more awkward end and then we're going to get it just watching it like that just chip chipped a few little bits off here okay so what my goal is now is to use the axe to take off the edges there so you can see it's starting to build up the shape now use the axe to take off the spine uh, and now just working with the axe to uh, to take the rest of that off He sort of started the whole ball rolling, but he's been so busy oh. that he's just not been able to organise um, a cover for a tool rather than... Okay, in terms of progress so far with the axe work, we have done this. Okay, 
So we've uh, just shaped down a profile, took the edges off. This turned out to be a little bit worn out, so we're going to take that off. But generally the idea was with the axe work, with the fine axe work, which you just saw before, uh, we've taken over the majority of it. And what we've done with the pencil, just kind of penciled in the, the shape again. And now, which has been gifted, my first ever Mora 106. Okay. So with this now, we're going to just pursue on with the fine knife work um, and get that done even more. So far, it's been a very laid back video. I think it's going to be one of those laid back videos. Not a huge amount going on, but that's the essence of spoon carving in a way. Very chill, very relaxed, very focused. You've got to be in the moment. Um, sound like a true hippie there, aren't I? So what we're doing now, basically, we obviously, as I stated just before, uh, we've kind of narrowed the whole profile down using the axe. And now we're using the Mora 106 uh, to really gradually gradually work through it what we'll do in a second we're going to take a break in a minute and uh, we'll just go for a, a quick walk around the woodland um, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll finish off So yeah, if you make a, a series mm -hmm. of, of, of little sweeps, just imagine you're making a tiny little bowl like that. But obviously it's slightly awkward holding it on this big piece of wood, but just I put my thumb on the top and just turn I turn the whole handle in a twisting. I come like I'm uh, it's it's a sort of you know glorified potato peeler. You just want to, you, well it's not a potato peeler but it, that's it. You've got to try and sweep out of it as well. Yeah I'm not getting that angle right now. 
Go on, do it again. Yeah, turn it more. But I've got my thumb on the top. That gives me an extra bit of push. Okay, so we're just approaching the end of the day with Jill, or you talk. And uh, what we're doing, uh, just to get some inspiration on different types of spoons and stuff that you can carve, and obviously inspiration for future projects, uh, Jules is going to walk us through uh, a, a lot of spoons that she's made, uh, and obviously some other guys have made. So, uh, where do you want to start, Jules? Shall we start over here? Uh, well, we'll start with um, Keith Matthews, who, who this is not uh, all of the ones I've got from him, but he does make a lovely, lovely, lovely spoon. Um, all his work has a little finial, well not all of it, a lot of his work has a little fin finial on the end and from the side, you know, these are, they're so beautiful, just, so, he's got a very, very good eye and he makes a lovely eating spoon, this is my favourite eater of his at the moment, this one. It's, and what wood is that, do you know? Uh, it's birch, I believe, yeah. I think all of these are birch, this may be something else, but it's hard to tell really after they've if you don't know when they've been labelled. This is um, one I bought from um, Paul Adamson because I loved the the, the coal rossing on here where he's carved in and then rubbed um, uh, soot or, or, or coffee into the grooves. And there's a lovely image of a little hobo and, and a, his little dog here, um, which I just thought was lovely and that's obviously been well used now as it gets used every day uh, these three are just boot fair finds this one's made of bamboo yeah these are t these are 10 pence in boot fairs but it's just interesting to see what different woods are made of and how different people look at it that's obviously hand carved and it's very old and it's got a great patina on it i love that patina even though you know, the handle's broken it's still a great spoon this um, is birch. I know that because Lee Stoffer made it for me here last time he came. There's his signature kind of feather shape that he does at the top of his spoons. And this is the most wonderful spoon for getting roast potatoes out of the roasting pan. Oh, I like that Yeah, one. really good. And that's a favourite in the house. In fact, I shall be told off for removing it because it's Sunday tomorrow. And... Um, uh, that's one thing I wanted to say is that to have a purpose for a spoon, you know, it, it's important if you're going to make a spoon that you know the purpose of your spoon before you start. Um, these, both of these are Martin Hazel spoons. He makes a lovely, almost ecclesiastical spoon um, that have a beautiful, sharp, sort of fast cut to them and uh, very, very pleasing to the eye. Uh, this has been oiled and possibly sort of heated to get this darker birch colour or it could have just been a different piece of birch this is a lighter again birch this one was a, a, a secret spoon swap spoon from um, a Swedish guy called Thomas Hansen and he does a rather good little signature head on the back of the spoon that's a big roughly tufty cooking spoon Again, I'm, I, forgive me, I forget which wood. It looks like it could be birch. It could possibly be cherry. I think it's probably birch. And then all the others are, are mine. Um, I've got a chestnut ladle, <clears throat> which was a complete nightmare to do. I did it with um, Paul, and I've left the bark on the back. Oh, wow, that is really impressive. I do like that. To show that the piece of wood, yeah, you know, it's really run with the piece of wood. It took us an hour just to split the wood. Chestnut's hard work. We, Paul asked me why people don't use chestnut, hmm. and now he knows, <laughs> because it's really, it's lovely, it's strong, it's very, very, very strong. I don't think, I just don't think you could break it. I really don't. Um, it's probably fireproof as well, I, I don't know. And this is a beach. A beach ladle, again, th th that's a lot of work, getting something like that out of a tree. I found a beach that had fallen over and a branch was coming up like this out of the recumbent um, body. And that's, yeah, it's made a good thick ladle, it's a bit thick. This is cherry, another ladle. Uh, this is very heavily sanded. And obviously I, I had to work quite hard to keep the uh, change of color um, in 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 the work in the body there, 
Uh, it's a small ladle. This is what we use for putting the tomato uh, sauce on pizzas. There's just enough. It's just enough there when you ladle out your tomato sauce on your pizza. Perfect amount. This is um, an IV spoon, which um, w when it was green, I managed to push the pith out of with a um, skewer, and I inserted a piece of willow um, in in the the, the 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 gap where the pith was, tied it round at the end, and now of course it's gone hard, so it won't come out again. But it's a kind of more arty looking spoon. Some of them, some of these are quite rough. It's, that's um, not quite sure what wood that is. I can't remember what wood this is, but that's, that's kind of rough spatula for the wood. This is birch. Um, these are these are birch. These this kind of spoons are what I make. They're all um, carved um, from the that way up in the wood. So the bark is on this side, and you carve in that way, and you get these rather interesting circles forming. Um, as opposed to a straight grained, this is carved from another angle. So you get different patterns in the wood depending on where you start your spoon from. Some I leave the bark on. I've still got the label. Diamond willow, there you go. That's a willow spoon. Um, and there was another little willow. Are these, that'll make these, these three. We're all from the same piece of willow. So that's a, nice, that's a nice piece of wood if you like keeping the bark on. This is a copy of a, a spoon I bought from um, Jojo. Um, and that's Hawthorn. Uh, she makes a lovely spoon, that girl. And I've done a, a poor copy, but goodness me, she's clever. And um, that's one of my favourite spoons. This is uh, uh, Plum. And that's the kind of slightly more arty spoon that I, I made um, with the piece of plum. Very hard work. To, to work it and I um, I left the uh, natural finish of the wood here and then just sanded the, the bits further down here to make it uh, smooth. Here's a pair of sycamore serving spoons which I haven't been oiled yet because I can't get them in the jam jar to oil them so I'm looking for, a, a, I'll probably put them in a carrier bag. This as well I think is sycamore, that's one of my favourite spoons, very good for cooking with the straight edge Excellent, you can sh shovel things out with it. Good for baked beans. This is um, birch, and it's just a big, as you can see, a large scoop with a very narrow handle, but the strength, although the handle maybe looks too narrow, which, which was a deliberate act, um, it's actually got some integrity on the side. It's much thicker that way, so it supports itself. This is um, mulberry, made from a friend's tree that fell down. Um, this winter. Lovely, lovely yellow, bright yellow wood, extraordinary colour. Darkens in the sun. See it's yellow underneath where it's been lying that way. That's a very early spoon of mine. I think it's walnut. This is hickory, a rare piece of hickory that my woodsman found for me. He cuts down a lot of uh, uh, awkward trees in people's gardens, so it gets rarer wood. Eucalyptus, that's probably my favourite eating spoon at the moment. Um, lovely smooth and that's that's knife finish unbelievably it's just very very smooth after being finished that's a slightly more arty one a bit of birch with the bark still on another bit of birch with the bark on I made this for my husband because he's a guitarist a little guitar inspired cherry spoon that's been um, that's sported birch that's for rice I guess and this again is birch with a bit of bark on just a simple round serving spoon. Um, yeah, that's that's it. That's what I've got at the moment in stock. They're all um, they they come and go quite rapidly. I sell them in a shop in Canterbury, so they sometimes I've got loads and sometimes I haven't got many. So there you go guys, that is it. That is the wrap of my spoon carving workshop. Sorry if the video recording was a little bit choppy in terms of scenes. What it is, we've actually recorded a separate video, uh, a very detailed tutorial, uh, which is a beginner's guide to spoon carving, uh, where we're going to literally from start to finish. 
Uh, so we covered a lot of stuff in there, in fact most of it. Hence why this little particular video diary was just literally that, just a diary, very, very kind of casual. Uh, my focus was obviously to come here and learn, hence why, you know, and it was a one-to-one, -one, hence why you didn't see anyone else. Um, don't worry, it wasn't my aftershave putting people off, right? Um, but no, that was it, it's the end of the day, and it's been a very long day, it's like half seven in the evening, been here since early morning. Um, so that's it, we've got a wrap for a day, going to be heading home now. Um, and that is it. Now the spoon, you're probably thinking, well, Zed chose your spoon. Well, it's not actually finished. Uh, what it was, we were covering so much stuff, like uh, practicing with different types of words and, and what have you. Not. You know me with my questions, right? Um, and obviously recording as well, that we just simply didn't get time to finish it. But what I'm going to be doing is, uh, as a project, when I go home to get this finished off, uh, the key thing here was really to get the fundamentals in place, which I'm very, very confident that I have done. Uh, Jill is a phenomenal teacher, she really is. Uh, really knows the stuff, easy going, owns a fantastic piece of woodland. Um, I really couldn't have asked for a better day. Um, it was actually projected to be thunderstorms today, but touch wood, not a drop of rain so far. So it's been an absolutely amazing day. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Like I said, it was very, very kind of laid back. Um, and uh, like I said, I have recorded a separate video, which is a beginner's guide to spoon carving, which is going to be putting out uh, separately very, very soon. So look out for that one. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions or comments or feedback, then please let me know down below. If you haven't already uh, subscribed to my channel, please do so. Um, and give it the thumbs up, man, if you enjoyed it. Uh, so like I said, um, oh, by the way, I'm going to put a link to Jill's uh, fan page uh, just below the video, Treedon Woods. Please feel free to check her out, even if you're not in the UK, you know, on a fan page. She posts up some fantastic content and insights and photos and so forth. Uh, and it's the best way to get in touch with her. Uh, she's doing some amazing work. Uh, so I'll put a link to Jill's um, fan page just below this video. So like I said, until the next time, I hope whatever you're doing, you have an awesome day, a blessed week ahead. This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. Peace out.